Good morning. So it's Easter weekend today. I'm house sitting for a friend. One of the questions that I get asked most on the channel is how did you do in matric, Mitch? What kind of matric marks do you need to get into varsity? What kind of matric marks do you need to get into computer engineering? And so while everyone's mileage may vary, today I'm going to share with you the marks that I got at the end of matric and then how I've been faring at varsity basically so far with those results in matric and preparation in school for university experience. Yeah. So to start off, I'll just read you my results from matric. I actually found the old SMS that I got the day matric results were released. But um, I got 86 for Afrikaans, I got 86 for English, 86 for History, 91 for, I think that's IT, yeah, 91 for IT, 89 for Life Orientation, 84 for Core Maths, 72 for Physics. Uh, the result was a bachelor degree. Um, and then, eh, I think I had a summary. Yes, so I got six distinctions, um, an average of 84.9% distinctions in English, Afrikaans, LO, History, IT, and Maths. Uh, so those were my matric results. I was quite happy with them. Um, you may be either impressed or unimpressed, depending on what kind of friends you keep. Having now spent so much time at Varsity, surrounded by students taking computer engineering and electrical engineering and chemical engineering, many of whom got in the 90s uh, at the end of matric, up to like 97% for the end of matric. Um, it's no longer that impressive to me and like matric marks like are less important to me obviously. As soon as you get to varsity, as soon as you leave school, um, matric marks kind of cease to become important, but they're important in getting you into varsity. And so, yeah, I got straight into my first uh, degree of choice, which was computer engineering. I know many people that got into comp eng with with 80%, so maybe one or two, 70%, you got into the Engage programs. I'm not sure, you'd have to ask individual people and go refer to the yearbooks for each individual varsity that you want to apply to um, to see what their absolute minimum marks are and recommended marks are if you want to apply to those programs. Um, but yeah, I got an 84.9% average at the end of a trick, distinctions in English, Afrikaans, LA, History, IT, and Maths. And now I'm going to tell you how that's, uh, how that's fared, how I've fared at university with those marks and with that preparation from high school. So my battery's running low, but I'm going to talk quickly. So I've got my academic record open here so I can go through each year of university and how I've fared. Basically, for first year, I got a 63% average for computer engineering, and that was with a 57% for operating systems, a 77% for introduction uh, to programming, imperative programming, I got a 72% for program design, which was quite good, that's COS 110, 58 for EBN, electricity and electronics, a 50 for mechanics, SWK, I managed to just pass that one in the supplementary exam, 61 for maths in the second semester, 60 for physics in the first semester, uh, 65 for calculus in the first semester, the two humanities and social sciences courses we had to do has um, I got 58 and 80, just because I didn't mark that first one that nicely, I remember. And then EMR, that was the holiday module, 86. So not bad for the first semester of a really hard degree, you know, 63.84%. It was fine, I did okay. Uh, obviously, it was a big step down coming from, you know, a massive amount at, varsity, uh, at high school, you know, like getting 80s and 90s for subjects to getting 60s. But varsity is much harder and like I actually had to change my learning style from just memorizing stuff and writing stuff out and making notes to actually doing tutorial examples and that and solving the difficult problems and yeah, it was all right. Then came around second year and I did quite a lot worse. I failed a few subjects and so the, the average on that is a bit skewed up because you deregistered some modules and so the, the marks don't reflect here, they reflect in the following year. But yeah, 58% for, for the, the year. So I got, let's see what I got, I got 78 for professional and technical communication, 71 for statistics, um, 52 for data structures and algorithms. That one was a bitch. Yo. I suffered with that module, but I came through it in the end. Electrical engineering, uh, 54, 57 for linear systems, that was hard. Digital systems, 61, um, JCP community service, 100%. 43 for NMC, I failed that one, had to do it the year after, that sucked. I failed the SUP and then had to do um, the, um, what do you call it? With, uh, summer school the following year. Differential equations, 42, failed that as well. Numerical methods, passed that with 60. Material science, 56, obviously passed that in the following year in the summer school. And so yeah, I actually failed three courses here because Calculus 258 isn't in here because I deregistered it before the final marks and that came out. So I actually failed three courses because the workload and that was really intense at the beginning of the first semester and I um, struggled with COS, one, two, one, with COS 212, data structures and algorithms and I put so much time into the assignments for that that I neglected my other subjects 
And so, you know, had an 84 something percent average at in matric and then failed three varsity modules in the second year. Had to add a whole other year to my degree. It was intense, it was tough. But that adding a year thing has been really beneficial and has allowed me to be uh, to perform much better at varsity. Here in my third year, I saw my average was back up to 63%. That was good. Um, that was information technology. Oh, that was EAW holiday module. You just passed that. Maths 238. Uh, so that's the second year course that I was doing in my third year. Got 63 for it. Differential equations, which I failed in a second year. Passed with 67. Calculus 258, which I failed in a uh, second year. Got 69 for it now. Engineering management, got 69. Uh, engineering activity and group work, 77. 55 for control systems, microprocessors, EMK, got 62. 53 for e and &E, analog electronics, that one was tough and no one enjoyed it. Computer engineering, design, ERD, 72. So overall, a much better set of results and after changing up my study style and um, getting my head on straight, taking fewer modules per semester, spacing it out over five years, and giving myself time to work on stuff properly, I started doing a lot better, and that made me a lot happier. And now, I'm in my fourth year, I've got a whole lot of modules that I'm busy doing, I won't bore you with going through them, um, I have to do some next year as well. It's been a wild ride, but it's been really good, and so, you know, I let my example, um, you know, give you an indication of how hard varsity is and you know you will definitely have worse marks at varsity than you did at school but you can still achieve a lot and you can still do really well at varsity depending on your learning style depending on your brain how you work and depending on how much effort you put in obviously a lot of my friends and that do a lot better uh, at the degree than me because they just they work harder and they're smarter and they're more inclined towards it and they put more effort into certain subjects than I do. Um, each to his own, you know, everyone has a different kind of level that they can work at and a different kind of intelligence that they can use in the world and to achieve things with. And so let that be your guide. I know lots of people achieve a varsity degrees uh, just as hard as computer engineering, like actuarial science and um, medicine and that with with 80%, with low 80%, sometimes even 70% if they follow extended programs or they really work at improving themselves at varsity. Um, yeah, equally so in <laughs> juxtaposition to that, you kind of get the idea though that um, a lot of the harder degrees, actuarial, engineering, um, medicine and that, you need such high marks to get in anyway that by the time you get to varsity, only the um, really smart people from school are kind of left on that and they were kind of really kind of weeded out people that would suffer academically at varsity with the entrance exams and the entrance marks, which is the point. You don't want to be doing a really hard degree that you're going to suffer through the entire course with and hate yourself constantly throughout varsity. Um, you rather go do an easier degree. And so yeah, my average at the moment for varsity is 62%. Not bad. We'll see how the next two years go and hopefully I can improve it. Um, I know lots of my friends are a lot smarter than me and they might have different mileage with university degrees. You might also have different mileage, but I thought I'd just make this quick video since people are always asking me how my metric marks were, what um, marks you need to get into certain varsity courses. Once again, go check the yearbook, go check the information that each of your varsities and each of your faculties deem um, relevant in that for getting into a course. You know, be guided by that. But yeah, that was my experience with varsity and metric marks and how it's all going so far. And obviously, at the end of the day, academics aren't everything. Your life and what you do with it and how happy you are is far more important. But yeah, obviously, work and academics and that is a big part of that for a large part of your youth. And so, yeah, it's going well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one with hopefully a more exciting video. See you soon.